welcome to this session in this session we are going to cover what is software testing and how one can start their career in software testing this course is best for beginner whether you are a fresher or experienced or coming from different background or non technical background okay i'll guide you how to start career in software testing not only that if you will be there with me till the end of this course you will be able to decide okay whether go for testing or not also you will be able to gain 70 to 80% of testing overview you can learn basic of uh, software testing concept means at end of this course you will be knowing what is software testing and how this is done and what are the different types of testing we have with live demo yes with live demo i am going to explain you everything okay and at last i'll be helping you to build your path okay build your path and guide you to achieve your goal like how to reach to your goal okay so without wasting our time let's get started so first we'll see the scope of testing okay there are lots of scope in software testing even a non technical person also can learn and start their career in software testing okay many time i have come across people saying okay educational background matters a lot but yes educational background does not matter a lot or your academic gap does not matter a lot to become a qa okay however recommended qualification is you should have btech be okay mtech with any stream okay but computer background is highly recommended then bca mca you should have bsc it msc it even you know if you are normal graduates who does not have computer background he can also start preparing for software testing and get a job okay so you don't have to worry at all if you have academic gap okay still you can go ahead and learn software testing you don't have to worry at all okay even you know many company many consultancy or small small company they still give a chance to those candidate who has their academic gap so only matters a lot is what your skill set and knowledge got it so you don't have to worry other important point is uh, a candidate should have very good communication skill because it's very very important if you are joining in software testing or any you know it sector okay if you are an btech bc or it graduate and working in different company and you want to switch your career in software testing you can also prepare and master the skill set and become a software tester okay that's the good news again for job search for such a professional okay it is little bit challenging as many company don't allow career gap but still many company and consultancy allow those professionals and give them a chance at last everything is possible if you really have keen desire to do it else it's waste nobody knows better than you that what you want so you can take a call accordingly i also had you know i also heard many times from many people that due to automation testing we will not be having manual testing scope is it i think a big no okay so manual testing will never die okay so you don't have to worry however automation testing can reduce manual tester but cannot completely replace it so you no need to worry always scope of manual testing will be there now let's see one of the interesting point how qa is different from a developer okay many times people used to discuss this will clear your all doubt related to you know qa and developer so qa will always you know busy in you know finding the bug and give a developer a work right in simple language QA will try to find mistake done by developer no other task QA has right so just apply QA skill and find as many bug as you can and full developer life with surprises whereas developer what they will do is so he will be always you know busy in doing lots of programming and develop feature and fix the bug okay so he will be busy in programming programming right lots of logical analysis they do and develop a software and it's not really easy okay qa will be relaxed by the way right because qa has to work on you know breaking the code 
okay so qa will be focusing on or tester will be focusing on how to break the code and where you know uh, developer will be working on how to build the software so you know it takes time and lots of effort to build something whereas finding other mistakes are very easy that's what tester job is so, however when it, when it will be release time when software is going to live any bug will come the first spot will be qa your boss will ask how you have tested and missed it but if you will do your task properly that time will never come that's where we need to show some extra and do test all the corner test cases etc still software tester will be having easy life than developer now let's talk about the scope or opportunity so obviously tester will have more opportunity than a developer let's understand this table okay so if we'll see if if there are you know three project or three company having a three different requirement like company one project one or project two or project three okay so this company has a requirement of java developer this company has a requirement of dotnet developer and this company third has requirement of c plus plus developer okay so suppose uh, there is a requirement of 10 developer for project 1 10 developer for dotnet project 2 and 10 developer for project 3 similarly for software tester the requirement for project 1 is 5 project 2 is 6 and project 7 is project uh, third is 7 so now this java developer can apply for this project only he cannot apply for project 2 because he know only java that's where we call software developer as platform dependent okay so dotnet developer can apply for the project where you know we are using dotnet only but if you'll come to qa qa can apply at all the project irrespective of backend and which programming language you have used to develop your software so with respect if you'll see one developer will be having opportunity only at 10 places or 10 project right okay or 10 opportunity will be there for developer but if you'll talk about software tester he will be having wide opportunity if you'll see 18 opportunity with respect to this example see how one can start their career in software testing so suppose you are a graduate you might be btech bc bsc it bca mc or any graduate degree you have okay now there might be three cases either you might be a fresher you might be you know fresher with some two year gap you might be preparing for government job xyz reason okay and then you might be you know already working in some non it job okay so for everybody you need to first learn manual testing and sql to land to the software testing that is basically manual testing okay so if you are a fresher okay you can directly learn manual and sql for fresher with gap also first so for all level first they need to go and learn manual testing and sql okay then if you don't have any gap like a uh, fresher or you know basically fresher which they don't have any gap so they can prepare for manual testing okay or, or sql and then along with that they need to prepare their college project and if you have a demo software testing project that will add advantage to your resume or your career so that you can start applying job you can attend few interviews and after four to ten attempt you can land to qa job for sure but same thing if you have gap in your career or academic either you are you know working in it or non-it job or you are a fresher with two three year gap you can first you know learn manual testing and sql then you work on some live project or demo project okay and then you can go and apply for job and attend the interview now where you have to apply job is in a small small company where this gap doesn't matter your skill set is matter or you can apply to the consultancy you can consult with different different consultancy and they will be providing you the job okay with third party company so you don't need to worry about this okay so once you are prepared well prepared with you know uh, sql and manual testing and with project you can definitely apply and after four to ten attempt based on your preparation you will definitely get a job and you can start qa life i'll be going to give you all the you know guide how to prepare and which course to pick and how to you know start and how testing look like so just be there with me 
we will see what is software testing first then we'll go through this diagram okay so software testing is the process of evaluating and verifying that a software product or application does what it is supposed to do okay so software testing is the process of verifying a system with the purpose of identifying any error okay or gap or missing requirement okay so that we can focus on quality and you know deliver high quality product to the customer in simple language you can tell that software testing is nothing but testing the application whether it is working fine or not as per customer requirement okay so at the end qa play very very important role to any software company okay so if you have very good qa team company can build a good quality product and earn name and fame right let's see what are the different types of testing we have and we'll see one by one okay so we have manual testing and we have automation testing so we'll see one by one like what is manual testing how it is done with live demo then we'll see what is automate automation testing and we'll see with live demo how automation testing is done okay so manual testing like testing the application whether it is working as per requirement or not okay manually with human effort we will call it as manual testing whereas testing done by some other tool or some other software is known as automation testing now we have you know three categories of manual testing where you know white box testing black box testing gray box testing white box testing is basically testing the code which will be you know done by developer black box testing is the testing which is done by the manual qa where code is not visible to you know qa only ui they will see and they will test and gray box tester is someone who have knowledge of you know black box plus white box today we call it as sdet okay we'll talk about those things in subsequent session again black box tester we have functional and non functional functional we have unit testing integration testing system testing again integration testing we have incremental non incremental again incremental have you know top down and bottom up but basically we will talk about unit testing integration testing system testing most of the time while testing the application non functional testing we have performance testing usability testing compatibility testing okay then again performance testing we have load testing stress testing scalability testing and stability testing okay so now you know what is testing and what are the different types of testing we have let's try to understand the same testing with some application in real time like gmail so suppose if you have to test the gmail what will be the different testing type so i am seeing the ui and testing this application as a manual tester this will come under black box testing i'll perform some um, functions functional testing where we'll perform you know component then integration and then system so let's talk about so component testing means uh, you know you will check each and every link each and every button of this you know uh, gmail whether it's working fine or not independently that we will will be called as unit testing or component testing okay whereas integration testing means wherever data flow is happening we will call it as integration testing uh, okay like you know once you will compose a email it will go to the other user right so whatever you have composed the same data should flow from one user to another user data flow is happening that we will call it as in simple language integration testing but integration testing has vast definition okay like after you know uh, sending you know uh, email user should receive notification user should receive sms or there are multiple things which you need to integrate with multiple third party application okay that we will call it as integration testing but in simple language wherever data flow happening from one module to another module we call it as integration testing and whereas system testing system testing is what testing end to end application like a user like i'll do compose i'll write something in description attach some file and send it to the user it will again go to the other user and open inbox and verify whether i have received email or not so testing end to end like a user we will call it as system testing okay then again uh, we have you know performance testing like if i am sending one email it, how much time it is taking it is going within second it's taking 5 minute 
right so that's our you know performance testing so it should uh, any application okay it should give quick response okay it should not take more than second or two second right if it will take more time nobody will be interested in using this application where this performance testing come usability testing means how easy user can access this so i'll be able to read easily okay this is inbox means message will come here means how how easily user can access this application will come under usability testing or accessibility testing okay then come to compatibility testing okay where in all and which in all browser i can use gmail i can use in firefox i can use in uh, google chrome i can use in safari right multiple browser support actually testing the same feature in multiple browser and multiple version of browser we will call it as compatibility testing that's how you know different types of testing is categorized and done on the real time application now we'll see we'll do live demo on live application how testing is done so let's see how one can perform testing in live application we'll go to the facebook app let's go to the live facebook app so i have to enter here you know email address or phone number and then password and then click on login button so for a qa or non qa suppose i'm testing as non qa what i have to do is i have to enter some email id password and login as a normal people what i can think is i will give my valid username valid password and click on login i should be able to land to home page that is the first case if i'll give valid username and invalid password i should get proper error message that your password is incorrect okay if i'm giving invalid username correct password it should give that email id is not connected to the facebook let's try some so i'll just try to give my email id okay and some random password one two three four five six seven we are doing this in live facebook app okay so as soon as i'll click on login let's see what will happen so i'll get error message called the email address you enter is not connected to an account miss with this email there is no account at facebook so in database there is no matching account with this email id that's where it, it, it went to database and it fetched that okay this account does not exist in facebook okay fine now i'll give this time a valid email id which is there in facebook database but i'll give wrong password one two three four five six if i'll click there here let's see what will happen so i'll get some different error message now so i'll get error message called the password that you have entered is incorrect forget password means i have entered the wrong password but yes user is exist in facebook database okay that's how tester do and validate everything like if user is passing incorrect password if user is not passing any data and directly trying to click here let's see what will happen the email address or mobile number you have entered is not connected to password because i have not entered both right so like that or you can you know populate you know error message called email id or password cannot be blank okay so as a user you will be able to understand okay i have not entered that's why i am getting this error so it is accessibility testing okay so this is how you test the facebook login but this is normal queue normal you know people testing but as a qa what are the different testing you will do okay we will see okay with a live demo we have some process to do it it's not like you know going to the website entering whatever you want and clicking and you know checking the whether it's working or not it's not like that it's not that much easy okay that's where you know make difference from normal man testing and qa testing the application we have some process to do this testing right we'll try to understand the process first and then again we'll come back and we'll do live testing on facebook so at high level what software tester do is they write test cases okay then they execute it and they will prepare the execution report and they will give the sign up whether they you know product go for live or it should not go for live okay based on their sign up only it will go to the next step now we need to understand before going to the next uh, you know what is sdlc and what is stlc so sdlc is related to software development life cycle and stlc is specific to testing life cycle okay so we'll try to understand first sdlc and then we'll jump to stlc part 
so to understand this sdlc part let's see where requirement coming and how requirement come to the company so suppose any one or any customer running his business and now he want to digitalize his business so he will reach out to the software company okay then software company sales executive will reaching out to this client and discuss all the project and deal will be done once deal will be done then company representative or software development team you can say that a business analyst will be there who can again collect all the requirement from this client or customer and then he will discuss all those requirement with entire team like okay it is called analysis well they will do feasibility study whether this project we should go ahead or not okay so now suppose if deal is done and okay companies agree to develop his project what next okay so we'll discuss now sdlc so requirement gathering will happen from the customer then we'll do the analysis whether we should go for the project or not now it is done then we will go for design where high level and low level design will be done by the designer or architecture okay for that particular project or software then once design is done then we'll do for do implementation we'll implement those design or you know you can say that you we will do coding or we'll do programming developer will do programming or coding for such a uh, those design to develop a project or develop a software once development will be done then testing will come into picture where qa will start testing those you know feature whatever is you know collected from the customer and he will validate all those requirement once everything is done and you know it's working as expectation expected as per you know customer requirement it will go and you know deploy deployment into the server so the software will be deployed into a real server or live server okay where customer will start using it and after that if customer is facing any issue or he found any bug that will be you know fixed under maintenance cycle so this is about sdlc software development life cycle which everybody should know now coming to qa specific we have stlc software testing life cycle where we we'll discuss about only testing concept so after getting the requirement what qa have to do so qa has to go through the requirement he need to understand the requirement and if he has any doubt related to the requirement like he didn't understood the requirement or he has any doubt he can again connect with business analyst and clarify those doubt once requirement is understood by that time you know qa manager will prepare the test plan like he will assign the qa like who will work on this particular feature and then those qa will start writing the test cases now after writing the test cases by that time we will be setting the test environment so now day nowadays devops will be a part who will be setting the test environment where you know a uh, develop a uh, uh, code will be deployed so that you know qa can start testing okay again there are lots of environment like pre prod uat live environment staging environment so these all things in details i have covered in one of my course you can go through okay so let's come back here so once it is deployed to the test environment then qa has to execute those test cases okay once qa will execute the test cases and he you know feel okay now there is no blocker or major or critical bug in the application then he will do the test closure where you know testing will be completed and we'll tell project manager yeah we are done with the testing we can go for the launch now the software will go live and everybody will cheers if it is goes it went successfully okay so this is high level about software testing life cycle now we will understand in detail now suppose a ba has collected the requirement a requirement will look like like this okay username should accept only you know email address password should have mac minimum 6 and maximum 9 digit length okay then password should be only number okay just example i am giving so that you will be able to understand and then login button should be there and then forget password link should be there so this is very basic requirement suppose customer is giving to business analyst and business analyst is you know uh, listing down those things preparing a document and sharing across the team so that team can start development and qa can start writing test cases so suppose i have the requirement in my hand as a qa so i will write test cases so how i'll write test cases i'll prepare a test document so company use different different tools like zephyr test trail jira to write their test cases suppose i'm writing in excel so you have to write like precondition test case test step test result so precondition is you know uh, 
build should be deployed software should be deployed into server and it should be up and running suppose one of the test case is test uh, verify login functionality with correct credential so steps will be navigate to the url okay okay once you will navigate to the url user should be navigated to the login page then enter username then user should be able to enter username enter password user should be able to enter password click on login button or submit button user should land to home page since it is a valid credential user should land to home page like that you will write n number of test cases with steps if i am writing only this scenario high level bullet point that will call it as test scenario okay and if you will give steps in details steps like what is expected result what uh, okay what is precondition then that will call it as test case so test case is in detail document where test scenario is high level document okay so now suppose you know qa has written written the test cases now he need to execute those test cases okay so once he will start executing he will find some bug okay where bug life cycle come into picture so once as soon as qa will find any bug a status will be new and test engineer will assign those bug to developer okay so developer will again what he will do he will try to fix those bug if it is valid bug developer will fix it if it is invalid bug developer will reject it by giving the proof okay now once developer will fix the bug it will go for qa again ready for qa where qa will retest the bug and if it is working fine okay then uh, qa will close it if it is not working again test engineer or qa will what reopen those bug and assign back to developer where again developer will start working and fi on fixes again he will fix and retest so this process will continue unless or until our application or software is bug free means there should not be any major or critical bug in the application once every all the test case executed okay then finally you know test lead will prepare the rtm traceability matrix requirement traceability matrix where we'll map each requirement with the test cases and pass fail this is high level document which so for a, every requirement we have written the test cases and we have executed the test cases and there is no critical or major bug in the application then only we will go for the sign off okay now test the now we'll analyze this all test cases and we'll do test in live application again let's see how we can perform testing in live application using this requirement so suppose i have already got the requirement let's go ahead so first what i'll do is i'll write the test cases okay so i have already written the test cases based on my requirement so our requirement was username should accept only email password should have minimum 6 and maximum 9 digit length password should have only number okay login button should be there and forgot password link should be there suppose this feature is developed and ready for qa okay so test case what i have written so to testing username what i have written is so username should accept only email so i have write i have written test with valid email test with invalid email test with incorrect email again multiple scenario will be there once you will be in to the system test with you know active user inactive user block user unblock user multiple scenario will be there so based on your requirement only you can go ahead and test it so as of now based on our requirement we have these three cases testing the password test with valid password so what will be the valid password so it should be between uh, in a 6 length to 9th okay 9th length and then only number so if you'll see as normal person how you will test so you can test with 1 2 3 1 2 random you will test you don't know anything what to enter right minimum 6 and maximum 9 there are there are a huge number between in between okay right you cannot go for all number so where we you know test design technique will come where you need to apply apply some test design technique and test this so since it is a range like 6 to 9 length okay then and it should be only number so i can go for you know test design technique which is boundary value analysis so i'll go for a plus minus 1 b plus minus 1 where is a is 6 and b is 9 okay so if you'll see uh, uh 6 minus 1 5 so i i will test with 5 digit which is number which should not be allow because minimum is what 6 so it will not allow so it will be invalid so it will come under invalid password so since i am using uh, you know uh, boundary value analysis i am writing in one line 
so this one two three four five will come to the this line okay now a that is six which is what uh, so i'll just write it here so that you will be able to understand so a plus minus one and then b plus and minus one okay where a is what if you'll see a is equal to a is equal to six and b is equal to uh, nine okay so if you'll use this formula so a plus minus one is like uh, a minus one five and then six and then six plus one is seven so seven digit i have taken then again similarly for oh no eight nine and ten digit okay nine minus one nine plus one and nine so like that we can go ahead and i can test only these so only if you'll see so six digit between six digit to nine digit it is allowed above nine digit also it's not allowed so i'll test with one two three four five six seven eight nine zero that is ten digit it should not allow so if you'll see so this this test data will come under this and this test data also will come under this category which is invalid okay so this will be invalid it is not valid as per the requirement but these are the valid scenario we can test only these four test data and this will cover all the requirement so these are all number and in the range of six to nine where we are verifying length of six we are verifying length of nine and middle also okay and then we are verifying below range and above range which should not allow right this is how we create you know password and then you can go with the invalid password that is incorrect password based on the requirement and then you can go for invalid password like you know random whatever you want you can do monkey testing right exploratory testing as per your experience you can go for you know number then alphabet character then a special character blank lots of thing you can test okay then coming to the next point checking the login button so login button you can check with you know valid uh, username valid password so if you'll test with valid username and valid password okay and click on login you should reach to the home page that is the valid scenario okay now invalid username so valid username username will be valid but password will be incorrect based on your uh, base password will be invalid based on requirement okay so you should give proper error message okay your password is incorrect if i'm giving incorrect username or invalid username but valid password i should get error message properly that your username is not valid okay then if i'm giving valid username and blank password i should get error your password is blank or password cannot be blank if i'm giving blank username and valid password again i should get error message called username cannot be blank if i'm giving both username and password blank i should get username and password cannot be blank then again check on you know forget password link i need to verify forget password link so link should be clickable after clicking on this link user should be redirected to enter phone number and reset password user should receive otp which will be valid for 10 minutes then finally user should be able to reset his password using this link okay so that's the complete feature which i have tested which is functional part now coming to non-functional part i need to test usability testing which okay this user ui look finds or not like i'll any user if i'll give this application how easily they can learn how easily can they understand like what i have to enter so i have here written username and password i can easily enter okay so username can be anything password can be anything but if you we'll go to the real uh, facebook application if you'll see it's clearly visible like email address or phone number this is more readable so user will understand either i have to enter email id or password okay so this this will be easy for user to understand what he has to enter in the application so that's what how easy an application is for user or end user we cover under usability testing then performance testing suppose i'm giving valid username and valid password and clicking on login and it's taking five minutes to login it's keep loading nobody will use this application so our response application response should be very quick within second once I'll, as soon as i'll click on login i should be able to land to home page right then security like if i if only registered user should be able to log in if the unregistered user if invalid password should not allowed inside the system to log in so where we test all those scenario under security testing again we use multiple tools for security testing 
then we use compatibility testing where we test uh, this application in multiple browser multiple application okay then uh, we can test the same thing as of now what we are testing in the web application okay so now uh, this testing can be done in web application mobile application or via api call so as of now what we have seen is via web part so web part have already we have seen that is uh, ui testing now same feature or test cases can be executed via api so you can learn more about api testing okay and since this is a maximum two hour course i cannot cover everything okay using postman we you know do api testing you can go and explore more now same feature can be tested using mobile app also where you know you can install mobile app you can try to log in you know by giving the username and password but this time not via web url via mobile app okay so here basically we can execute the same test cases okay in multiple you know uh, environment you can say that like web or mobile or you know api okay so that's the high level thing okay so high level we have seen what we have seen high level is i'll just go ahead and see so high level what we have seen so far is so first we need to understand the requirement or product and then we need to test the happy flow and then cover all the functionality and then test negative flow and then go for non-functional testing that's all pretty much high level about software testing how it is done welcome guys once again in this session we'll understand a growth for a qa so normal qa means what uh, quality assurance is becoming an attractive career path for many so many people are you know choosing qa because it's very easy how it is easy when you have very interest in testing if you are you don't have any interest in testing and you are not the such a guy who can learn frequently it's not a right job for you right so for q if you are a big if you want to become a qa you need to learn always continuous learning is the main focus in the qa and obviously you have very attractive career path in the qa field so i'll explain the growth so first when you will join very first time it will be junior qa or trainee test engineer you can say that then you'll become software tester then qa analyst then software uh, uh, test engineer or you can say the senior software test engineer then you will become qa team coordinator or you can say that lead uh, a test lead or team manager uh, test lead yes and then uh, you'll become test manager or manager then you'll become senior manager senior test manager once you'll become senior test manager then you can become either you know director of qa and or senior director of the qa is the last okay so you have this many career option or promotion options if you are joining a qa job so starting from the trainee test engineer you can become till director of software qa which which have you know uh, experience bar of 15 to 20 years this will like start from zero right you can reach out till uh, 15 to 20 year or 20 plus year right this is one thing now if you want to switch to multiple uh, other sector also qa has very wide range of path okay let's see growth for qa or other part so you can become you know if you have very uh, good coding skill either you can specialize uh, you can become a specialist qa like you can uh, go in performance testing or you can go in security testing you can go in automation testing alone okay you can become estate nowadays estate is very very famous software development engineering testing where they know you know end to end everything automation like api automation mobile automation ui automation right so based on your skills you can move to the where especially you can become a specialist qa either automation security and performance okay or if you are very good and very passionate about the coding skill then you can become developer too you can do internal switch or apply to another job and you can become developer too after qualifying in the interview now if you are the quality assurance and you want to go for management skill yes this is also open for you okay you can become a manager test manager or director test director right you can go to managerial role also or you can go to the business analyst role also you can become business analyst and senior business analyst and so on so see how many you know opportunity qa has either you can become still become you know still uh, keep remaining as a manual qa then you can go to managerial skill and you can become test manager if you have coding skill you can go through this different path so these are the high level you know career growth for a qa that's all about this hope you understand the path and choose the right career thank you so much for watching see you in the next
Welcome guys once again. In this session, we'll understand QA roles and responsibility. We have seen uh, why should we choose, you know, software testing field. Now, what is QA roles and responsibility? What QA will be doing in day-to-day -day life? We'll understand that, okay? So we have different roles for QA, like one QA can become, you know, test analyst, okay? Or a junior or senior QA. Then test lead we have, then we have test manager and then director role, okay? There are four different, the main four major role. We'll go one by one, okay? What is the role of and responsibility of test analyst, okay? So test analyst, what they will do, they will go through the requirement, analyze the requirement and clarify those requirement. If they have any doubt, they can reach out to customer or, you know, business analyst and they can clarify those doubt. Based on the requirement go through, they will prepare the test document. With respect to test document, they will be preparing the test scenario, test cases, test planning, review, okay? All those things they will be preparing okay test execution test execution report will be prepared by again our test analyst at the end of the execution bug report so uh, whenever they will uh, find any bug while testing they will raise the bug and at last every end of the uh, sprint or end of the day as per the company policy they will be sending the bug report to the lead or manager discuss fixes with developer uh, whenever they are, they will find any bug test analyst will find any bug they will discuss with the developer they will communicate those bug with developer many times or they might have to get into the call with developer sometime retest fixed defect so whenever there were the defect will be fixed qa has to retest those defect and close it if it is working fine and uh, reopen it if it is not working fine maintain test document suppose there is any change in future in the test uh, document or any requirement then again test cases or test scenario need to be updated by the test analyst again communication communication is most important part for the test analyst because they will be communicated uh, they will be keep communicating with internal stakeholder like developer ba engineering manager product manager project manager etc right and with uh, you know client also so that is all about test analyst role the next we have a lead role okay so for lead also it, they will also go through the requirement okay they will go analyze the requirement brainstorming the requirement and help uh, other qa to write the better scenario and better test cases review the test document they will you know help with the you know peer reviews or you know they will assign the peer review okay uh, to review the test cases for the better quality uh, lead re responsibilities you know to prepare the test plan they will prepare the test plan they, these are the person either you know again differ company to company sometime you know test lead or uh, test manager will prepare the test plan okay and then execution uh, will be taken care or you can say that you know overseen by test lead or sometime test lead also will execute some test cases all the configuration related to test planning will be done by test lead communication he should be very good in communication because he will be again communicating with uh, internal as well as external stakeholder leading the team so under test lead there will be four or five or based on the company okay a few qa will be there under you know lead role who will be you know overseeing the qa task okay so uh, lead responsibility you know take care of all those people who is working under him and take the task done get the task done from them okay preparing the release notes and test summary report uh, is one of the role for test lead they will be preparing the release notes and test summary report and hand it over to the customer and send it the send it to the customer or internal stakeholder guiding junior and senior qa yeah they will be guiding a junior and senior qa if there is a, they are doing any mistake or uh, how to improve the process conducting meetups they will be frequently you know conducting the different meetings with the team internal as well as external and uh, improving the process and improving the test plan and quality of the product hiring yeah n last but not least uh, team lead you know or test lead will be participated in hiring process also for hiring better candidate for the company test manager test manager will you know perform high level you know pre plan test like okay how many people will be there resource planning everything will be done by the test manager like how many people will be there okay what resources is required right all those things will be taken care by test lead describe and document the found error so all the document format okay you need to refer this kind of document okay prepare this kind of uh, document okay for test process follow this all those documentation or you know will be done by uh, documentation part will be explained by the test manager again guiding team the uh, test manager will always guide the team 
motivate time to time for career growth and learning test manager uh, one of the key role is you know motivate the team members to further you know keep learning and keep growing thing okay overseeing all the work by different qa qa manager or test manager you know the main uh, job is also to you know oversee all the task or work done by the qa and uh, you know oversee the performance of the qa okay that will help for you know uh, promotion of the qa so uh, the test manager might do you know one to one with the every qa in monthly or uh, quarterly helping with better framework always helping with the better process so that test engineer or other you know qa working under him should not feel burden okay work life balance should be clear for that also he will be you know helping with a better framework and guidance hiring process yes test manager also will be part of hiring process to build a better team qa initiative a uh, test manager one of the role is to you know you know create multiple qa initiative so that qa can earn and qa can learn also for their personal and professional growth last but not least is you know uh, test director or director role they will you know plan and monitor work related testing such as keeping the deadline to the customer following a schedule controlling requirement to test setting task for team member and communicating with the stakeholder so all those high level things will be done by the director okay guiding managers okay what to do when to do and how to do okay hiring process they will be very you know actively you know participate in the hiring process and building the right team okay presenting qa qa director is the first first person to directing the qa if anything any problem will occur in the qa anybody they can reach out to the director he will be helping with the problem so first like uh, qa if qa analyst have any problem they will reach out to manager then manager will reach out to director if he cannot solve that problem taking qa initiative means guiding to take uh, multiple qa initiative to you know help people or team members bringing qa process and many more so qa uh, director is someone who will help manager and other team member to build a better process for the organization for long term achievement so these are high level you know roles and responsibility for a qa which i have explained so far apart from that might be few more roles and responsibility which once you will start working in qa environment you will get to know or you will learn to know okay that's all about this see you in the next hello all welcome to the session once again in this session we'll try to understand use of sql as a qa so suppose you are a qa or want to learn sql let's see what you have to do okay or what you will be doing in your day to day activity so as a manual tester or software tester you will you know execute the test cases on ui either using api or you know ui right by seeing the look and feel model right and you will do pass you will do fail but how how you will do right so how you will do you know how you will use sql with respect to that i'll tell you so suppose you are trying to you know uh, sign up from the facebook so while sign up what you will do you will put some information like first name last name email id new password then you will uh, you know put your uh, gender then uh, date of birth and then you will click on sign in or a sign up right so as soon as you will do click on this sign up button what will happen these information will be you know submitted to the facebook and those data whatever you are going to enter here it will store in facebook database it will store in facebook database where now facebook will be having your all the information whatever you put in your in their database okay so now as a qa suppose you are testing this sign up flow so you are you know writing the test cases okay test to verify sign up page okay sign up feature suppose so you will put all the information with valid data very simple uh, scenario I'll, let's repeat once again so test to verify sign up feature with valid data so you'll put all the valid data click on sign up then you will get message okay sign up has been successfully completed okay so now what as a qa what you will do you will go to the database okay you will be having access to the database as a qa to the test server or test database you will go to the database you will write some sql query like select a star from you know account where username is whatever email id you have given 
and you will fetch whether all the information whatever you have given whether those information are correctly inserted into database or not so what basically you are testing here you are testing the back end part like whether whatever data you have put in whether it it is going and staying in the database properly or not so first name last name whatever uh, you have put whether that is you know exactly what i have entered here same thing went here or not or whether you know sometime what will happen you will enter some you know email id or first name or last name but here first name or last name is not going because uh, the developer have, have you know missed some logic okay although it's throwing you know proper error message okay that uh, proper success message that uh, you know sign up request has been submitted successfully but in database this last name is not recorded so that is issue that is bug right so that is the back end testing which qa will do so after submitting this form you will go to the database and respective database table fetch those information and verify whether this data has been recorded successfully into the database or not right in this session we will talk about learning path how we can learn manual software testing so always learn from experience okay else you will end up with you know wasting lots of time okay learning path is very very important okay so learn from somebody who is already doing that task so that you learn real time experience okay and take the stairs not a lift don't go and you know just you know learn some uh, you know top topic or you know highly used topic or you know important topic you can say that and start applying for job this is never going to work okay and this will be very very dangerous okay so build the base and build the confidence okay so that you will get success for sure okay so don't be rely on the ladder part because you know you can say that lift can fail but once you will prepare your base stairs you can say that that will never fail it will go beyond what you think and you will definitely get success for sure okay again i came across many people saying testing is very very easy job and anyone can prepare and you know get a job that's true but not 100% in order to become a good tester okay and get a job you must need to understand the basic of testing concept what is software what is software testing process software uh, you know testing concept test design technique there are so many thing right again how many you feel that okay you can learn it from youtube right there are so many people will be thinking okay i can learn the same thing from youtube why i should go for training right yes you can learn from youtube also but that's called uh, you can say that unstructured learning okay it takes some time to get all the topics okay again you will not get all the topics here at one place lots of information are available in youtube seriously no doubt but it is scattered when it come to professional course learning it is a scattered everywhere okay you will not get everything at one place okay this is called unstructured learning okay unstructured learning you where you will learn one topic from one tutor one topic from another then another like that you might understand or you might not understand right so you will go so no sequence of you know concept learning at all in this case now then come to a structured learning where you will get all the topic and concept at one place and still if you have any doubt you can ask your tutor or expert means somebody is there to help you okay this way learning is very very easy okay and you will get confident you know where to go right so conclusion is so structured learning is very very important you can learn from you know udemy you can go for linkedin learning you can go for coursera you can go for offline or online multiple trainings are going on you can learn from them okay so learn from experience or under some guidance else you will end up wasting your time that's all about this Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next. In this session, we'll see what to learn to become a manual QA or a software tester. So you should learn, you know, you know, testing concept. Okay, then you should go for database and SQL concept, and you should know few tools like Jira or any equivalent tool, Testrel or any equivalent tool for writing the test cases. Then MS Office, Microsoft Office, you know, like Excel document. then postman you should know like for basic api testing that good to have and then good communication skill and then if you know additionally you know api testing or mobile app testing and automation testing that will be you know good for you to have as a fresher or beginner if you are experience or if you are you know uh, you have gap 
and then you want to go for this testing career you know you just explore for manual testing as well as the automation testing so that you will be having more opportunity right so basic master you know master testing concept is what like you know basic of software okay what is software how this work how this is built okay then you know the software testing career path if you have a start career as software training engineer where i can reach okay so everything you should know so that your path will be clear right types of software you should know understanding server test environment then sdlc i have talked about sdlc only okay there are so many models in sdlc like waterfall you know waterfall spiral hybrid okay vnb so you need to just learn everything so that basics will be clear okay then agile model which is highly used in the it industry this day then you should know build process how software build and deliver to qa then we should know test label like what are the different test label we have then test type we have then what are the different test design technique we have there are so many test design technique in one of the tech uh, one of the technique we have used is boundary value analysis in this course but there are so many technique which is really needed to you know become a professional qa then you should know the bug life cycle i have just discussed a straightforward bug life cycle but this is a huge topic okay then test case and test scenario then you know you should know all other test document like how to prepare release notes and test summary report other thing you should know regression testing and non functional testing right so that's pretty much you need to learn to become a complete manual qa i have created a course on manual you know complete manual testing concept best for beginner which is a best seller course on udemy you can refer it and learn complete qa concept and for sql uh, we have a separate course which is in details for beginner so manual plus sql combined together you can learn and you will get certificate as well for udemy from udemy actually post completion of this course again it's not limited to my course you are free to learn these topics i am giving this topic so that you can learn from anywhere you can learn this topic from youtube you can uh, if you want to learn from udemy you can go for any other tutor or if you if you want you just go and scroll my uh, you know explore my courses once if you feel okay this is helpful you can go ahead and learn okay so however you can learn learn just start learning okay just i'll just guide you that udemy is one of the best platform okay where you can learn or you can go for offline training also or online training also there are so many people who is providing online training also where you will be communicating with instructor okay on daily basis like udemy also if you have any doubt you can just uh, post in into q and a or you can just uh, write an email to instructor and then instructor will be connecting with you right so it's not mandatory to learn from me but yes these topics are you know uh, most important topic or you can say that the base of software testing which you should know okay but if you like my course or explanation and able to follow me so far you can just check out my other courses on manual testing and sql and automation as well i have given in the link below okay so now in next session we will see how to become automation tester and once you learn manual that's continuous learning i'm going to give so once you learn manual what is the next you need to learn automation which automation ui automation then api automation right like? so everything i have guided so let's see what is software automation testing and how it is done i'll be executing live you know a script and i'll be showing how this look like automation testing look like right so let's see you in the next session all the best see you again in this session we will try to understand automation testing so let's understand the automation testing what it is yes so testing the application using another software or tool without human intervention is called as automation testing so in automation testing we get manual test cases from the manual qa and then we convert test cases into test script okay by writing the program using some programming language okay and then we execute those test script into some you know using some ci cd tool whether it is jenkins or other okay and then we review those report so here you know we are not going to run the test or execute the test one by one manually instead we write the test script once and then we can run any time 
over Jenkins as demand and that tools will execute all the test cases and then we'll see the report. Okay. Now one question. Uh, is manual testing knowledge is mandatory to learn automation? Yes. Manual testing is required because without knowing the basic of manual concept and terminology, it will be difficult to understand the testing process. So we cannot ignore manual testing concept for sure. Okay. So we should know. Again, automation does not mean only Java Selenium, right? You can learn Python Selenium, JavaScript Selenium. Again, it's not limited to, you know, there are so many tools available in the market, which is, you know, open source, or you can say that free, which will help to automate any website. Okay, whether it is API testing, whether it is UI testing, or whether it is mobile app testing. So basically, whenever we find any repeated task, we go for automation as per the business requirement. Okay, so let's see how we can automate basic test case using Java Selenium. I have created a sample project, which is test project. And I have, you know, this test package under that I have created one called one test uh, class called login test. Okay, login test. So in that login test, I have created one method called login test. Okay, so this is a test script how I'm writing. So as of now, what I'm doing is, so I'll just explain high level, okay? But in details, once you'll go through the course or you know, this uh, Selenium, Java Selenium course, you will get to know in detail. So what I'm doing is first I'm setting the path of a web driver. Then I'm creating object of, you know, Chrome driver. What is object? Everything that is a uh, totally Java concept. You should learn Java in order to go for automation or UI automation. Then I'm just calling driver.get and then passing the Facebook URL so that it will launch Facebook URL. Then I'm just using driver manage window dot maximize to maximize the window. Then I'm finding the web element. Okay. One time activity and then just I'm passing the username and then finding the password field and passing the password and then finding the login button and clicking on the login button. Now username and password I can pass anything. So this method I can call and create multiple test cases. Okay, so I'll minimize this. So if you'll see, I'm just testing test incorrect login. So incorrect login, I need to call login test method and I'm passing incorrect login, uh, you know, details like username and password, both are incorrect. So I should you know get some error message called the password that you have entered is incorrect. Okay, that I'm expecting. So I'm just setting the assertion or I'm, ask, I'm setting this expectation with this tool that if I'm getting this, then it, this test case is passed. If I'm not getting this, this test case will be failed. Similarly, I'm checking for test blank user login. If I'm passing, you know, blank username and valid password. Okay. Then I should get some other, you know, error message like the email address or mobile number you enter is not connected to an account. Means account is not there because I'm not passing any email ID. Similarly, for another test, I'm passing, you know, username, but I'm not passing password. So I should get the password you have entered is incorrect because I have not passed any password. So three tests are there, which is very basic test, which we perform manually also on Facebook website. Now uh, we can perform on Facebook website. Now we'll see how we can do automation. So I have suppose written this small script for automating the login page of Facebook. Now I need to execute it. So as of now, I'm using IntelliJ. You can use any of the editor like uh, Eclipse also. For execute, execution, let's see how I'm executing. As of now, I'm not giving pre-request condition how to configure everything. That is the complete course you can go through and you can learn. So I'm just high level explaining or giving you demo like after end of the course, you can also do the same. So I'm just running run and then let's see what will happen. So automatically, you know, Selenium will launch a browser. It will launch a URL and it will, you know, give this username and password and capture this, you know, whether it is working fine or not. See, browser launched, Facebook, it navigated, then it's giving invalid uh, blank, then it's throw the password, uh, you know, error message. Again, it launched, it, it is testing next, uh, you know, second user journey, blank username and password, then again, I'm getting some error message. Then third user journey, again, it launched and it will give again, you know, Username and password both are wrong. I'm getting some error message called the password you have entered is incorrect. Forgot password. So now I'll go to the report. So all three test cases, if you'll see here, it's showing pass all green. Now in order to go to the report, I'll just go test output, emailable report, and I'll just show you the report, how it will look like. 
so i didn't do anything okay just write the test script once and i'm i have executed and i can see the report here right so you can see the report here where you know you can see you know this test case uh, th these are the three test cases which took this many millisecond okay three test case are passed zero skip zero fail so there is no test case failure all are passed so this is very basic reporting okay but if you will go for any of the framework you will see the live reporting like there are so many reporting like report portal or you know you can see allure report you can integrate you know extent report there are so many reporting so one of the report i'm explaining allure report where you can see in detail reporting like which test case run okay what is the issue you can you can attach the screenshot also into the you know reporting there are so many things okay you can see the graph you can see the suit level what what got failed you can see the package level so there are lots of things which you can explore as part of this course so i have already you know explained these things so suppose uh, as a manual tester if you have to test these three scenario 100 times it will be boring for you right but for automation once you write this you can run thousand times without you know doing anything machine in this software will to you know take care of everything you don't have to run again and again you know manually you just need to and once you will integrate with some other tool called jenkins that that also you don't have to execute jenkins will automatically you can set the timing okay run at 11 am night and automatically you know jenkins will trigger that build at 9 uh, you know 11 am or 12 pm night and it will execute and it will send email to all the people whomever you want to send that okay this many test cases pass fail and other things right so that's how the power of you know automation testing that's very interesting and once you learn this you can follow or refer my courses as well and if you have any doubt you can always reach out to me that's all about you know ui automation using java selenium thank you so much for watching see you in the next hello all in this session we'll get to know how to become a specialist qa or a qa expert okay so you need to learn one you know one function and master one testing type like you can learn and you know master manual testing or functional you can become expert in you know functional qa or you can learn you know load testing or you can learn performance testing different performance testing like load testing stress testing spike endurance scalability volume testing and you can become uh, you know specialized in load testing or performance testing you will you can become you know expert in load testing only okay and then you can become automation testing by exploring different types of automation like ui automation api automation and mobile automation so you need to learn and you you have to become a master in that particular skill set to become a particular a specialist in that particular domain then you know become a security tester for that you need to learn many tools there are so many tools and you can become a security tester expert where you will be giving you know a security advisor you know or risk and assessment uh, to a company okay so this is also a highly paid job a security tester okay or ethical hacking you can say that that is uh, relatively same which work for company to protect the data and protect uh, the uh, you know information which a company has and then finally we can have s uh, which is you know uh, you can say that nowadays it's very famous and trends which is going on in testing field to become a s date what skill set you know you know you need we'll discuss those part but s date is somebody who have i think most of the skill like you know manual testing also you know automation testing also you know load testing also right we'll see in detail what you need to learn to become a s date so one can become a s date okay easily but he should learn the skill set whatever is required to become a s date okay so basically s date stands for software development engineer in testing okay s dates are technical IT professional or software tester who have a strong background in both programming as well as in functional testing. They know most of the testing type like shown in the picture like they know manual testing, DB testing, web service, agile, automation, performance, web security, DevOps. So they will be known as you know full stack QA as well. So now let's see what skill set you need. So for if you are want to switch from you know manual QA to automation or S date, you should know you know this Java complete Java OOPS concept and you know uh, DSA data structure and algorithm in order to crack the interview. 
okay without this you cannot go okay so you should know but basic java if you know and oops concept you are good to go for automation okay so you should know these many topics which i have listed you can go through this topic and then you should know you know complete functional concept for software testing like you should have you know manual software testing concept then you should know sql database concept you should have a very good communication skill you should know multiple tools like jira testrel microsoft access etc apart from that you should know you know automation tool okay at least one automation tool for ui automation so you in case you can learn selenium or for api automation you should know one tool which is rest assured you can go for any other tool also and for mobile automation also you should know one tool which is apm in my case you can learn for any other you can go for any other tool so these ui automation api automation and mobile automation is you know must to go for a complete automation tester then you should know jenkins then git and bitbucket concept dockers containers you know the basic and then you should know some performance testing tool like jmeter load runner or any equivalent tool and then for uh, you know uh, security testing you should know owasp or any equivalent tool so you can say the basic prerequisite condition to learn uh, and become sdet is these are the things which i have listed so based on your interest you can you know learn one by one each courses and gradually one day you can go and move to sdet role that's not you know tough but yes you should have the skill set again once you learn and if you have the skill set right skill set getting success in any domain or any you know function is very easy that's all so in this session we will talk about how you can achieve your goal okay so first of all now by this time you will be able to you know answer yourself like whether you are going for software testing or if you are not going right so take the decision don't waste your time okay then start preparation learn the manual testing and sql or automation whatever you want to go for okay there are many challenges will come like you will you stuck some time okay like due to some xyz reason family issue personal issue right so don't worry about that challenges came to everybody life it's not only you so don't worry about that just start preparation okay once you take decision and then prepare good resume once you are done with all the preparation okay then apply and attend the interview that is very very important once you are ready start applying as many as application you can you apply and attend the interview again you can apply via direct company portal you can go for friend referral okay you can go for multiple job portal sites right there are so many things okay you can explore how can you you know get a job in software testing and you know different job portal where we can apply software testing job you will get lots of them right so you can apply and attend the interview you might get rejection for few starting you know attempt okay you will be rejected you will be you know very tired and you will think okay i cannot do this so no don't worry okay never give up never ever give up okay once you re get rejected just list down your you know question where you you know didn't answer okay prepare those question after rejection so learn from each rejection okay from each rejection you to you need to learn what was the mistake i have done what was the weakness prepare those again again apply again attend and then at it at some point of time you will get success for sure and once you will get success you will enjoy that journey you will feel okay yes i have done myself and i have reached to the success you have not you know done some rocket science you just have to prepare and you know capable of you know getting the job and yes once you have the knowledge you can get a job definitely for sure so what matters a lot in it sector is knowledge if you have very good knowledge and experience you will get a job for sure last but not least appreciate yourself many people ignore this okay so you should not or you should never ignore this effort okay so be away from negative people who tell okay you cannot do this okay first trust and believe in yourself that you can do it okay appreciate your small small effort okay every small effort should be appreciated okay sometimes people surrounding you will also say okay why you are wasting your time okay 
see somebody is earning this somebody is earning by doing marketing sales job also but how others are earning yes right so you can earn in marketing and sales job also but only if you have the interest to do it else you can ask someone who is doing sales and marketing job already you will get to know the truth right so please ignore that please ignore negative people or you know uh, negative person comments so believe in yourself and keep learning and practicing you will get success for sure i'm sharing my personal experience where i have seen very very weak professional they have learned the things and they did it and today they are working with big mnc's who was thinking once like you okay that i cannot do etc xyz reason they were having right so last but not least never forget to appreciate one effort right if someone is helping you or you are helping yourself appreciate it once you appreciate it you will only feel good after that since your appreciation is going to give positive impact and put some smile on other faces so why to hesitate this is priceless guys so appreciate every one effort whether he is your family member friend anyone who is helping you okay finally i'll give some success mantra okay which is never stop learning believe in yourself motivate and reward yourself nobody is going to help you except you so help yourself okay focus on your goal do what best you can it never too late okay start as soon as possible don't take or you know don't waste lots of time in taking decision take the decision and make it right right last practice 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 things looks very easy if you will go through the video watch the video and youtube anything but once you will practice the real challenges will come okay make learning is your habit and you will get success that's the mantra of success right so if you believe in yourself anything is possible right thank you so you can always reach out to me at my email address which is pankaj online tutor at gmail dot com and don't forget to give your valuable rating and comments appreciate every one effort i would like to thank you all thanks for watching hope now you know where to go please feel free to reach out to me in case if you have any doubt thank you so much